This is the finest engineered product in the world of its type today, and certainly the cleanest window into the music. Cost has never been a consideration at Vivid Audio. This is no exception. The M1 project has been ongoing for three years. The individual projects within that project have been allowed to run as long as they've had to, to achieve the results that Lawrence would like. The thing that probably strikes everyone immediately is this stack of bass. Does it really have to be that much, that high, that many drivers, etc.? It's all down to the excursion capabilities of the drivers in each band and to match the maximum linear excursion of the drivers in the sequence we used in Moya, we find that to meet the limits of the C225, we need eight of them. Another question which people might well ask is why have we chosen to stick with C225 driver? Why didn't we develop a new one? Why not use a 418s or 221s? Well, the point is that with eight C225s, you've got 800 millimeter voice calls. By using this approach, we've got a huge power handling. We have much more magnet per driver. And of course, being smaller, the top end breakup frequencies are much further out of band. So all in all, you end up with a more accurate bottom end by using this approach than having a small number of larger drivers. So at the bottom, we've got a pair of C175s doing the low mid. In the middle, a C100, D50 in the upper mid, and finally a D26. The C175 is a driver we've used as a base unit in G2. It's got a long history, it worked very, very well. But in this application, it no longer goes right down to the very depths of the bass. It's limited between 130 and 550 hertz. And it actually turns out that it handles this band with incredible agility. Moving up, we have a C100. The improvements that we've brought to this driver for Moya are a copper cap on the magnet pole that increases the high frequency range and reduces distortion tremendously. We've also paid attention to the breakup performance of this driver by putting carbon fiber rings at the three strategic nodes, the neck joint, the dome joint, and the outer periphery, all of which help move those top end breakups to being well out of bend. Then we come to the D50. Again, we've added a copper cap. The other big feature in the D26 and the D50 is that we've added a diamond-like coating. In the past, DLC was really only suitable for steel parts or titanium parts, but now you can apply it to aluminium. And it does materially add to the performance of these two drivers. And all the manufacturing is done, including the drive units, all the testing, the cabinets get infused, the spraying, the initial research and development phase happens in England, but the final testing of those ideas happens here. It takes a day to make one cabinet, and there are nine cabinets. And then, of course, building all the drive units and building the crossovers and so on and bringing the whole thing together. It's an enormously labor-intensive process. So we've used a modular approach to the construction of M1 Moya. Uh, it's for a number of reasons, but I think quite an important reason is practicality. With Moya, each of our base enclosures weighs just 60 kilos. It's still manageable. Certainly a couple of guys can lift one of our base sections. The way that we keep the weight down, of course, is to use a vacuum-infused composite sandwich with a low-density core. That's, again, something we've used since the days of gear. Because of reaction cancelling, we have no need for mass in our base chambers anyway. But the other thing about reaction cancelling and the lack of vibration in the cabinet is that you don't need to decouple between the cabinets. It was certainly not the intention to be able to manufacture all these things in-house, but it became evident quite early on that the quality we required, the skills were just not available locally. We had to perform these functions ourselves and we brought all these processes in-house. So we're pretty happy with the result because it does give us tremendous control over every single facet of the manufacture. Actually, what's nice is that this is a typical Vivid Audio speaker, and it's really nice just listening to it at ordinary levels. I've drawn the parallel between 
driving a powerful car or a 12-cylinder car or something like that. You don't have to put your foot down to know that you've got a powerful car under your foot. It's an ease of delivery that's the result. It's not just about blowing your socks off. It really works at all levels. We can all be proud of Vivid Audio in what we've achieved over the last 23 odd years. We've produced wonderful loudspeakers and we've brought a huge amount of enjoyment to thousands of audiophiles all over the world. And that's the thing that makes us really happy when somebody really enjoys music through our loudspeakers.